Hello everyone, welcome to this second video where we're gonna learn about significant figures. And what significant figures are, significant figures tell you how precise a measurement uh, was taken. And so, if you take a look at the beaker and the graduated cylinder that's on your screen, there's a limit to how precise those pieces of equipment can make a measurement. For example, the beaker can make a uh, measurement of 12 milliliters, and we're going to learn how um, to do that in a moment, how we can determine that in a moment. While a graduated cylinder is more precise, and it can make a measurement of 12.2 milliliters. Now, the reason why it's able to do that is because of two things. One, we're able to write what we know for certain and then we're able to estimate the last digit. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of how we can do that. Um, if you take a look at the beaker on the left, the beaker on the left has a certain amount of, let's say, water in it. And so let's go ahead and record that measurement. Now, we get to record what we know for sure. Well, what do we know for sure about it? Well, first of all, it's counting by tens. So it's, since it's counting by tens, we can for sure say it's 40 and not 50. And I think we can see it's, it's between 40 and 50. But if you look, we don't, we, we don't uh, have a line for the ones place. But what we can do is we can estimate the ones place. Because it's pretty close to 50, we can probably say that it's about 49 milliliters. So notice we're able to for sure say it's 40 and we estimated the last digit which is 9. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graduated cylinder that's on the right and if you take a look what is that one counting by? It's counting by tenths. So it's counting by 0.1. And so what are we able to for sure say it is? Well do you see how it's definitely 2.6 but it's not 2.7. And so because it's 2.6 and not 2.7, we can say it's 2.6, but we get to estimate one more digit than that. Because we see it's right between 2.6 and 2.7, we can maybe say it's 2.65. And so notice how we get to say what we know for sure. We know it's 2.6 for sure. And then we estimate the 5. In the beaker, it's 49, it's for sure 40, and we estimated the 9. Now, just a disclaimer, one person might estimate it as 8, so 48, while another person maybe estimated it as 49, and that's uh, you know a normal thing, but generally we can see that it's pretty close to 50, but not 50. Now, let's go ahead and start talking about the rules and in um, determining and counting significant figures. So there's four rules that we need to consider when looking at a number to determine the significant figures. And here are the four rules. One, all non-zeros are significant. So in a number, all non-zeros are significant. That's essentially the numbers one through nine. Then we're left with three other rules that deal with three types of zeros. We have zeros to the left, zeros to the right, and zeros in the middle. The first rule talks about zeros in the middle. If you have a zero that's in the middle of non-zeros, those zeros are going to be significant. And I'm going to go over some examples in a moment. Zeros that are to the left of non-zeros are never significant. So zeros in the middle are always significant. Zeros to the left are never significant, and zeros to the right are only significant if there's a decimal. Now, what I want to really emphasize is it has to do with where the zeros are in regard to other numbers, not, regard to, not in regards to the decimal. The decimal can be anywhere. It doesn't matter. It's where are the zeros relative to the other numbers. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples here. If you take a look at the first number, we have 27.9. Those are all non-zeros. They are all significant. That's why there's three significant figures. If you take a look at the next number, which is 0 0.23, let's go ahead and count the significant figures there. 
the point two three, the, the two and the three are significant, because again, non-zeros are significant, but what about that zero in the front of it? Well, if you look at rule number three, zeros that are to the left of the non-zeros are never significant. That is not a significant digit. That doesn't tell us anything about the measurement. Now, if you take a look at the third um, number, which is 408, the four and the eight are significant because they are non-zeros. Now, what about that zero, though? What type of zero is it? Well, it's a zero that's in the middle of non-zeros. That is a significant digit. And so we have three significant figures in this particular example here. But what about zero, four, zero, eight? The, the fourth example that we have here. Well, again, the four and the eight are significant. The zero that's in between the four and the eight are significant. But the zero that's to the left of the numbers is not significant. Zeros to the left are never significant. Now the last one here, I really want to highlight the zeros in this particular one. Um, notice how there's two zeros in this situation. And I want you to ask yourself, are those zeros to the left, in the middle, or to the right? So take a moment to really ask yourself. And when you're answering that question, well, it's to the left, the middle, the right of what? Of the non-zeros. And so if you take a look, both of those zeros are to the left of the non-zeros. So both of them are not significant. Again, it's not where they are uh, in regards to the decimal place. It's where they are in relation to the numbers. So uh, those zeros are not significant. Now, um, these next uh, examples here, I'm going to take, talk about the first two at the same time, uh, two, uh, 2030, one with the decimal point, one without. Now, we know the two and the three in both of those numbers are going to be significant, so it gives us two significant digits already. The zero that's between the two and the three are also significant, so that's going to um, be a third significant digit, but what about the zero that's to the right of the numbers? And again, it's to the right of the numbers. Well, the first one, it has a decimal point, and so zeros that are to the right are significant if there's a decimal point. Now, the second one does not have a decimal point, so that zero is not significant. And we're gonna look at an example in a little bit of why that is. Now, if you uh, take a look at the third one, we have 480. The four and the eight are significant, but the zero is a zero that is to the right, and it is not significant because there's not a decimal. The next one, the 29.0, is not, or I'm sorry, it, has a decimal so that zero at the end is significant because the zero is to the right of the numbers and there is a, a decimal point. And then the last one, we have 0 0.2080. The first zero is to the left, it is not significant. The second zero is in the middle, which is always significant. And the third zero is to the right and it's significant if there's a decimal, which there is a decimal, so that is significant. So that's why we end up with four significant digits. The two, the zero in the middle, the three, or I'm sorry, the eight, and the zero that is to the right. Now, if you take a look at the uh, scale, the scale is reading 5.01, so is it correct to say that it's five grams? The answer is no, it's not correct. You have to say it's five point. 01 grams because we know to the hundredths place that it is uh, it's significant to the hundredths place because that scale will measure to the hundredths place. Now there's some scales that measure to the thousandths place and if if it were so then we would record that digit as well. Now look at the thermometer. Um, is the 88 correct? Well it's not because again we we record what we know for sure. Because the thermometer is counting by ones, we can see that it is for sure 88 and not 89. And then we get to estimate the last one and we can estimate that it's 88.4. Maybe you'll estimate it's 88.3. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this next one here. So this next one we have, it's a scale that shows uh, 0 0.500 grams. So do we write 0.5 or do we write 0.500? And the answer is, well, let me ask you this. 
in your previous math classes that you, you know, all the math classes you've ever taken, would those two numbers be the same? And the reality is, yeah, they probably are the same. But for, for taking measurements, it actually is way different because the 0 .500 tells us how precise that measurement is. So you can't just write 0.5, you have to write 0 .500. And so let me ask you this, uh, based off of this scale, is it possible for it to be 0 .501? And the answer is no, it's not, assuming the scale is correct. But is it possible for it to be 0 .5001? And the answer for that is yes, it is possible. It's just we don't know because the scale is not precise enough to give us that information. And so that's why that zero zero at the end is significant and why it's important. I know that this is a lot of information uh, and that significant figures can be a little different at first because we're starting to think about numbers in a different way than we are you know, we've done in our whole life, but I promise you that by the end of the year, by the end of you, you'll be so comfortable with it. Even by the end of these first couple of units, you'll be so comfortable with it. It's not going to be that big of a deal.